So my name is Tali Noel, like uh, Joseph said, and I'm a teacher. I mean, the very best teacher in Liberia I can ever boast of, right? And being the very best teacher, I've been able to, over the years, um, have written a book called The Three Facets of Effective Classroom Management. And that book is basically one of the books that have helped Liberian schools over the year now. And we've been able to go out, reach out to schools, teaching, and informing them about what we do, as well as getting involved with um, our organization that's called Teachers Farm. And we have exclusively been into training teachers um, in Liberia, basically Mon uh, Montserrado County, right? So um, this is who I am, and I hope you enjoy what I'm about to talk to you about. So let's, let's have fun together. Okay, this is how it, it begins, right? Um, I hate math. I mean, math being one of the very difficult subjects in school has been really difficult for me as a person because my own perspective on learning is quite different from how teachers understand to teach math and how students accept what it is that math can be taught to them, how they can comprehend that, and as well as being able to apply what it is um, with the different topics, the different um, subtopics that, that is there for them to understand and apply, right? A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity of visiting a friend. Being that this friend know that I'm a teacher, she thought of asking me what it is that you can do, right? For a person who's previously been in a community and scoring good grades, and then while they move over to another community, they have different experiences with people in the community, with um, the classroom, with how people are teaching them as well, and they start to score low grades. What can you do to improve the student lesson? I mean, we have tried. We have tried a lot of times to beat the person, keep them away from, 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 from eating, as well as stopping them from playing. So then that dawned on me because of the fact that I understand what it is when it comes to pedagogy. And pedagogy is the different processes that helps a teacher teach a lesson well for a student. So I asked them a question, where's this child? And they said, the guy went to play. I said, but then I called the guy, let me see the guy, right? <laughs> so while we were having a conversation, the guy came in, um, right away in the time, I asked him, hey, bro, what's up? And we started to have a conversation. Back and forth, we went, and I understood this child loves soccer, and he's always been in the act of wanting to play soccer. So that reminded me of a lot of things because of where I've come from with understanding what it is education as it relates to teaching and learning. So today we're going to be talking about the psychology of teaching and learning. So I hope you enjoyed it right with me. So imagine you have a generation, a generation that is basically focused on cultural differences, a generation that is basically focused on economic um, lapses, a generation that is also not focused on how they can improve learning in the community that they, they are in. So thinking of all of these things, uh, the importance of technology within this generation has improved learning, has made learning to transition from where it, was, it once was. My late father came up with a generation that is called baby boomers. A lot of them grew up within the world wars, what we call World War I, World War II. They grew up to this generation and they were all silent. Unlike what we have now, we have people who are outspoken, we have people who are in, increasingly learning every day. They are learning new things, they are learning things on social media, they are learning things from um, within the community, their perspective from individuals that are around them. So within all of these different vices that they are faced with, they are being able to express themselves. You cannot teach this generation how you taught that generation. That generation was silent. That generation was the one where the ones who went on farms, 
that generation, they were the ones who were told that classroom management to them, it meant going on farms to work so that they can be able to know or understand how they are, they are um, able to abide by laws in a classroom. That generation, they were silent. That generation, teachers came to class and said anything they want to say, and it made students to take that and use it forever. But now, this generation, we are people who already have knowledge. So teaching us is not a one size fits it all, but it's about how you use different instances, different methods to be able to share your ideas to improve teaching and learning. Now, I have a question for you. How can you improve teaching and learning for students based on our unique identities? Now, let's look at the story with the boy. What if, right, that boy teacher was able to take him and use him as a star player in the classroom? What would you think would be the outcome of his, his grades after that story has been done in the classroom? What if maybe one of you here had the opportunity of um, being in a classroom and because you are, say for instance, a camera person and you are giving the time to be able to express your, your ideal skills and using it as an example in a classroom, what if you are given that opportunity? What would have been the outcome? Would you be able to learn or wouldn't you be able to learn? Now, Gen Z, how important it is because we have a lot of things that eat up um, positively impacting our lives or, or negatively. We are faced with these things. And in order for us to achieve greatness, in order for us to achieve teaching and learning goals, we need to basically look at how we can give them the opportunity to be free, to be who they are, to express themselves in whichever way they are unique. Because learning is basically not about us being, like I said, one size fits it all, to use just one method to be able to achieve um, different learning goals from here and there, but being able to, to expect learners being different, expect learners being people who are willing to give out themselves, right? So we need to change the librarian sector. How can we change the education sector in Liberia? It has to do with us face, facing what it is as it relates to the model. The model helps us, not the curriculum, the model helps us to define how we want teaching and learning to be in, implemented. So that's why I'm here today to let you know that we can improve teaching and learning because there are trends and questions that we don't have answers to, but we can also be able to improve in these questions from how we are able to define our model of teaching and learning. So one question would be, what is the performance rate of students in high school? Have we, have we monitored the performance rate of students in high school? Have we come together to ask ourselves, how can we change these factors to improve students' ability to learn in school? Or we just going to school using the old methods, using the old ways, and thinking that we are carrying on learning. The next question, what is the rate of, of learning to, to practice? That's one of the, the deepest part of the failure we have in education. What have we done to improve learning from what it used to be to what is fit for the future? I mean the future, the generation that we are in right now. What can we do to improve um, learning practices? The next one has to do with what are the learning models effective for 2023 as compared to that of 1960, that of my father's generation? What can we do to change it? Because now, nowadays, I see students going to school and they are still discussing facts in school. Facts, question has to do with, for example, what's the capital city of Liberia, Monrovia? That's basically the lowest level of education. Nowadays, students are people who think, people who are creators. What are, you, what are we doing? What are our models? What are, what are the different styles or, or methods we are producing for students to be able to think critically, for students to be able to collaborate? What are we doing to change those factors? For students to be able to work together, for students to be able to be free. So today, I propose to you one of the best models that I've always used in my, in my classes, that's the project-based learning. 
The project-based learning method helps every student to be thinkers, to be creators, because this model has been aligned to work within what we have today as the generation that we are working with. So if we improve in what we do, it will help us to create students who are willing to create things for better future uses. Remember, the lowest form of cognitive development that we are focused on right now is remember, right? And we need to gravitate from just the lowest form, which I just uh, gave an example of, as in the fact, to move into creativity, to move into analyzing. Because nowadays you have people who basically don't even communicate. Students don't even communicate well. So how they are able to express themselves, they cannot express themselves because they cannot communicate well, right? Students cannot analyze things. So how would they be fit for the real world, the real work world that we have now? We need to change the model to help us reach to that place. Now, I begin by, by saying I hate math. Yes, indeed, I hated math back in school. I still do. <laughs> I mean, I don't, check, I don't check money when I'm giving the money. For the fact that I hate math, all of my teachers, they were all st uh, stuck with the fact that they are about to teach five different topics in a day. Why should I be so? Why, why should we go to class and you focus on your content, your ability to express a content knowledge and not the students' ability to understand what you've taught them? So learning is basically about comprehension, application. And we are not teaching for comprehension and application. We are teaching because we want to show off what we have as a person. So in order to improve what we have as a person, we should understand that there are models that help helps in the process of getting students to be able to apply this knowledge. So they are important for us. A student cannot learn from a person who doesn't show them love. That's one thing I've learned over the years. As a teacher, you can be who you, you needed when you were younger because it's important. I had a teacher who made me to be who I am today, and that's why I love to do what I do. I mean, I took a test. I went to school here in Liberia. All, all my school years were right here in Liberia, and experiencing teachers who, because I failed a test, they couldn't go back and ask what was the factor for this child's failure. Back in college, I experienced this unique teacher. I mean, very amazing. And, and today, she's, she's my mentor, right? I always go back to her because of what she did for me in the past. So I've been able to understand the different things that she was able to teach me. And she did this one thing to me that made me who I am today. What was it? I took a test. I stay up late. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't study as compared. I didn't feel the test as compared to what I have previously given her in tests in different test codes. So after the test, she called me and said, "Why did you make this grade so low?" And for that matter, through that experience, she was she was able to understand why I failed. And she told me, you are going to take the test over and you are going to, to score 75 points. Then it dawned on me that this is new. I mean, I've have, I haven't experienced this. And this was just my third year in college. All through all my, my school years, I haven't experienced this. And now this is upon me. What can I do? That changed my entire perspective of teaching and learning. And it made me who I am today. So after the story with the boy, after the... The issue with understanding how soccer being used as a method to help this child learn, it proves to me that students are not just willing to learn based on the, the punishment you give them. It shows how you love them that are going to help them to improve in what they are doing. So this child, I told, I told the, the, the girl that you need to change how you, how you teach him. If somebody is teaching you at the school and, and not doing showing him love in his own way of learning, he wouldn't learn. So you need to change how you do it. 
Teaching and learning is not one size fit all. I'll always say this. In order for us to improve teaching and learning, there are questions I want to leave with us today. Have you identified who are the different learners in your classrooms? What are, what are their learning needs, expectations, and motivations? Imagine the level of the learners that you are teaching today. Their energy, how is it channel? Their motivation, how is it being inspired by you as a teacher? I mean, teaching is not just about lesson plans. Teaching is more of how you love, how you help people improve in the learning skills that they have. So in order for us to become effective teacher, teachers, we should be able to help students learn by loving them, by helping them to understand and be giving them the opportunity to apply the skills that they have learned. Thank you.